Hello everyone, this is Smara. Today I will show you what are classes and why we need them. First let's turn on Python. One minute. Okay, first of all, what is a class? If you have already done some other programming language earlier, you may have already known what class is. A class is a kind of block that instead of running some code, stores some code that we can use later on, like a variable. So how do we define a class? Well, to define a class, you need to use the keyword class followed by the class name. I'll keep the class name as elevator. You'll see why I did it. So for now, I'll just put pass. Now we have our class. So how do we create the object? To create the object, we start with the variable, then the equal sign, followed by the class name. Now if you want to print it, I'll first save this. We got this thing. Well, it's true we didn't tell it to do anything, but what does this mean? You may be thinking that uh, because we set it to nothing, just the pass keyword, it will just return nothing, except it returned this. This is because elevator, when we passed it to the variable e, became an object. So it's just showing the object description. And you may notice this main keyword. This is the default keyword that does, well, nothing. So in order to override it, meaning give our own instructions rather than let Python decide, we have to use the init keyword. So using an init keyword is the same as to using a function. You start with the define keyword, then instead of just the word ini initialize, we put underscore, underscore, initialize, underscore, underscore. Here we are overriding the default initialize main keyword. And because this is a function, we need the brackets. Now, because this is a class, we don't want it to do just nothing. We want it to do something. So let's say, because this is an elevator, I would like to use the starting floor and the starting door state, that is whether the doors are open or not. So we need start floor and then the start door. But that's not the only thing we need. We need the third keyword, which is actually not a variable. It is called self. What is self? If you have already done previous programming languages, you may notice that self is like the this keyword in Java. So it does the same thing. Self stands for the object. And it could be any object. Like for example, in this case, it can be E. So what do we do next? We set self dot floor equal to the starting floor. And then the same for the door. Self dot door state equal to start door. There we go. We created two objects 
under and class that to set to the starting flow position and the starting door state that is open or close now if we try printing this again one minute We get the same thing like this one, well, except the ID. So how can you make it return something useful to us? Well, to do that, we need to use the string method. But the string method converts uh, other data types to strings. So how can we do it for the class object? we have to override the string method. It's the same like the initialize, define underscore underscore string underscore underscore and then self. You may have noticed that even though we have three arguments including self, we did not pass self here. That's because self itself is E, the object. So it automatically passes E. Let's continue. So let's set the string to mm, the doors space. I'll tell you why I kept it like that. Next, we need to use an if else statement to get whether or not the doors are closed or open. So if self dot door state you may notice I didn't keep equal to equal to true because uh, even without keeping it will be by default checking for true so if self dot door state then I just concatenate open so self oops, I mean string plus equal to open. You see why I kept that space? So that the word doesn't come smashing into doors. Oh, and also, yeah. But otherwise, if the doors are not open, you have to put the word closed. Next, we have to add the floor number. So that would be string, first let's prepare it, string plus equal to comma space at floor number space then we can concatenate the flow number. First we have to convert it to string of course and then we can add the flow number. And then we have to return the string. You see that? Finally something useful. When we added our parameters, we set the flow number to 1 and the doors open as true. So it returned the same thing. The elevator is at flow number 1 and the doors are open. Now I just want to show you, I will create another object, E2, actually I will set the first object as E1, yeah. E2 should equal the same elevator class, this time with different inputs. It should be at floor number 3 and the doors are not open. And now let's print this one. Yep. 
This time I kept that the doors are closed, they are false. So it returned that they are closed. And I kept it at the elevator number 3. So it's at floor number 3. But that's not the only thing we can do. Well, other than defining the initialize and string uh, keywords, we can also create our own methods. This is the usual bit. Let's say I want to open the doors. Well, instead of like, always changing arguments, I can just create a method to do that. So define open doors. We have to pass self again so that we get the objects that we need. So once now we, that we have prepared our method, we have to set the door state object to true. So self dot door state equal to true. This tells us that the door will be open. Let's test our function. Let's set the doors to initially closed. Let's call it function. You see that? We set it to be closed, but because we called the function, it's now open. You may be asking, why do we need classes? Just using variables is enough, right? Rather than doing um, all of this. Well, for such a small program like this, it's hard to see the advantages, but the reason they are good will be clear once you start programming bigger classes. Take the turtle example. The turtle is a class, just like elevator. What the turtle does is that it uses a, well, turtle to draw graphics. So how do I create a turtle? First I need to create a screen, w equal to turtle dot screen. And then the turtle t equal to turtle dot turtle. You see that? Now turtle is a class, but turtle with the capital T is a method. You can tell because it has the brackets. So rather than typing all the code to make at least one line, we can just type only a few lines to do that because the class already has the code to make the line and that is around 4000 lines that is so classes are actually useful to store lots of code when we don't want to type it over and over again unlike for loops you can always call the class anywhere in the program as long as it's in the program, of course. So thank you for watching this video and I hope you enjoyed it.